All right, good afternoon, students. Ah, welcome to uh, Physics for Marine Engineers, PCM 150X. Um, we're obviously be continuing with where we left off, well, our topic one. But before I begin, um, I just want to check something, and then I'll, 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 I want to get some questions from you, and then I want to start on um, the new section. Okay, so the first thing, I did show you guys this. Um, just give me a moment. I just want to open it up again. Um, just check. And I'm not going to show you how to do it. You should be able to do it yourself. Has everyone gotten this textbook from Access Engineering? Um, Luyanda, Nolo, Wendy, Afika, you guys get this? I can't hear you. Miss Birkus, have you got it? No, okay. Well, I did mention in the last online lecture, or well, the first online lecture, and I posted a Blackboard announcement. Make sure you get this book. Um, yeah, there's some good problems here. And yeah, don't surprise if it rocks up in a test or an exam something. Some very nice problem, awfully solved with answers. So like I said, I'll be using this as a secondary or tutorial kind of guide for, um, or essentially more exercises for you guys to practice. Um, so make sure you get this. I I, I, uh, um, let's check my Lucy. Did you get it? Right. Yes. No one did. Make sure you get it as soon as possible. Um, yeah. So I've posted a Blackboard announcement on access engineering, login with your student details, and download each chapter. All right. So let's embark back to the lecture part. So before I start on the lecture, um, is there any questions with Afika? Go check your Blackboard announcement or watch the le online lecture one. Um, it'll tell you where, where to get it. Um, another thing is, yeah, so guys, questions on any of last week's um, thing. Uh, Luyanda, I don't know if you had a question or comment. You good? I'm good. Hundred percent. Um, I should be seeing you guys on campus tomorrow, so yeah, it's going to be fine. I'll talk about that at the end of the lecture. Okay, so if there's any questions now, I'll give you guys a minute or two just to bring it forward. Maybe questions you were playing around in the textbook, and then you couldn't solve them. It's your time now to bring it forward. If not, just send, maybe just send, three, send me three thumbs up and I can proceed with, um, with our lecture today. Because today's one's gonna be, it's gonna be quite meaty, even this whole week, basically. Jabulo, I see your mic's unmuted there. Okay, guys, just send me some thumbs up. So I can proceed. I'll wait on you. I've got it one. Bushy, thank you very much. Neighbor, okay, thank you, Africa. Uh, Mr. Miss, oh, thank you, precious. All right, okay, guys, we're gonna move on. So, the order of today will be touching on vectors and its components, right? So, what is a vector, right? Let's quickly see. Okay, so I'm not sure if you guys are aware, right? So I'll just I'll just talk to it. 
But before we get vectors, we have to talk about a scalar quantity. And a scalar quantity has some, something that has magnitude, but no direction. Examples of scalar quantity, for instance, for instance, would be length, um, a temperature, weight, cost, for instance, would be a scalar quantity. A vector quantity is characterized by having both magnitude and direction. Two in particular is velocity and force, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm not a big fan of the way these slides articulate stuff, so I'll just go to my board and I will, I will show you um, exactly the definitions. Well, you know what, which I, which I perceive to be the better definitions. And I'm going to give you some, uh, you know, some, some small tutorial in here. Um, cool. So let me quickly see. Perfect. Uh, where's my pen? Cool. So I said scalar. I'm assuming you guys can see this. And we have vectors, right? Okay. So I said, we obviously know this is magnitude and no direction. Mag. Yes, direction, no. But what it's all going to tie in now, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. Magnitude, yes. Direction, yes. So I mentioned some examples for you already. For instance, temperature, right? Mass in kilograms. Um, volume, right? That's one. Can someone let me give me two more? Quickly. Anyone? Time. Let's see. Gravity. Yeah, you could. No, not gravity. I don't agree with that. So, yeah, straight speed. So, speed. Right? And um, I'll, I'll not say gravity. I'll tell you why. Um, I said mass, and I'll say time here, right? It's in seconds. This is temperature in degrees. So basically, anything, anything you can measure straight up, like like or, or the scale or some measuring equipment apparatus, that is essentially a scalar quantity. It has no direction. What's important to understand of this is that scalar quantities can be added arithmetic, right? They can be added, add or subtract arithmetically. So right, I'll say arithmetically. Arithmetically. You get you get it. I'm a, yeah, okay. Arithmetic. I'm forgetting something here. Arithmetic, okay. And what I simply mean by this is if I add, um, if one apple, there's an apple over here, is one kilogram and the other apple, a bit bigger, is two kilograms. And I ask you, if you put this in one bag, you put it on a scale, how much apples would it be? It'll be three, right? So what I'm saying is you can add it with the normal rules of, um, um, you know, the, no, the normal on um, the normal subtract minus divide things like that. So the idea is that that's what a scalar is. You just add it and subtract it ar arithmetically, right? However, vectors we have a different quite a different type of quantity, right? So um, in this case, velocity would be one, right? Acceleration. I'm putting it together for a reason. We also have forces. Another one is current. And what I'm saying here is that these have a magnitude and a direction. And we cannot simply just add, for instance, if I, if I had to say there's one car going this way and another car going that way, let's say 20 kilometers, and the other car is going 50 kilometers. They go no low, and I'll ask you, what is the total speed of 
of the, the two cars. You're going to say to me 70. It's not possible because they're going in different directions. That will only apply if the one cars, the one car, for instance, was going in the same direction. Maybe you can add them. What's important to understand is that when we're adding vectors, and also that is why gravity is not um, a, a, a scalar, because it, it has direction and it's downward. So it, the, magnet, the magnitude is um, 9,81. Um, meters squared and the direction is downwards. Therefore, it's an acceleration. I hope that's clear to everyone, right? Speed, on the other hand, is different from velocity. I just want to make a note of that. That speed over there. Speed will be the exact amount like on your on, on, a, on a clock, on the speedometer. So 35 kilometers per hour. It doesn't tell you the direction. Our velocity in the case would be you're traveling, let's say you're traveling a car in a um, and then you're driving straight, it would be 35 kilometers, maybe north, and therefore it becomes velocity now. So speed is directly the value you get, whereas velocity has a particular direction. So I need to, just to know the difference between the two, I might test you on the formal de definitions for this. And I'll show you exactly what I'm, I might do. But sir, vectors are affected by gravity. Yes, I'm saying a vector is, a, a vector is, I'm saying gravity is a vector. That's what I'm saying. If I, I, I don't know if I was clear on that. I'm saying it's not a scalar, as according to Bourdieu. So yeah, I don't know if I forgot your figure or maybe I said something else. Um, and where am I now? So yes, and for vectors, you can either add or subtract them two ways. Or, or rather, I'm gonna say they are added sub subtracted geometrically. So there's a stark difference between the two. One, you have to add arithmetically, and one, you have to add a subtract geometrically. However, this, this can be put into the graphical method or into components, which, which we'll talk about. So making you aware of essential what a vector is. Basically, the whole of marine engineering and mechanical engineering, you exclusively or implicitly you're dealing with forces, and velocities. Everything is moving. You've got a crane, you've got a ship, you've got pistons moving, you've got a shaft turning. They're all forces and velocity all the time. So it's very important for you to understand these concepts. Because what you initially taught in your, your pre-university life, that everything can be added by using basic numbers like 1 plus 2 plus 3, 4, you know. But what we try to do now is you have to add it, you have to add vectors in a completely different way. In fact, there's a whole Topic on vector mathematics, um, which I think you do touch on um, this year. But obviously, we'll be using a, a subset of that, which is essentially similar to that. So I'm making aware just of the difference. So what I want to do now, just going to uh, make, make a quick exercise here. I'll just uh, cut a few things up and see if you're able to answer them. A Copy small exercises to see to some comprehension to see if you understand what you're doing. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys can see that. I like you just to classify them either as vector or scalar. Let's make it bigger for you. I hope you guys can see that. Is it all clear? I think I hope I answered the question. Just let me know if I did. So this for this particular exercise, just classify it is either vector or scalar from one to eight. Ali, is that clear? Numiso, Onani. You guys got the objective. Colin. Rianda. Nicololo, Wendy. Okay, great. So I'll give you guys around two minutes and then we can, yeah, tackle the rest.
All right, let's see. Okay. You time to classify what these vectors and scalars, Ms. Jardim. Okay, number one, scalar. Correct. Talk to me. Unmute your mic. Uh, let's have it. Scalar. Next one. I agree with the first one. Next one. Are you guys sleeping already? What's going on? Vector, fantastic. Perfect. You guys understand. It's quite straightforward. Okay. Um, number three, let's see. Can you see number three? That's a vector as well. Here's a gravity example. Number four, Wendy, talk to me. Number six, scalar, definitely correct. Number four, vector, exactly. Uh, eight scalar, yes, and number five. Five and seven. Five is definitely scalar, that's a distance. And number seven. Vector, thank you very much. Thank you, my students. And I'd like to just state, for instance, right? Again, scalars we can add uh, arithmetically, vectors we can add geometrically. And what I mean by that, if I say add, let's add 30 more uh, meter, meters cube of water to this pool. The total will be how much? How much would it be? I think it will be 90, right? Straightforward. However, if I say, yeah, but if I, if I say, if add velocity or assume the swimmer, Now travels um, to the right or east or east at five meters per second. What would the total velocity be of the, the swimmer? You obviously can't tell me that. You can't just add three plus five. It's not a scalar. So that's not the answer. So I'm making you aware of the difference. So we have to approach, when adding vectors, we have to use something completely different. I hope that's clear to everyone. And we'll be talking about that today. Is that all clear to everyone? I hope that's clear to everyone, right? Okay, so I'll move on, if that's okay. All right, so reverting back to vectors. Hope you guys can see it. Is that vectors, obviously, we, we plot them on a Cartesian plane. And um, in this case, we have vectors. We have four different vectors there. They're all of equal length and all at the same direction. In this case, we can add them. So if each one is 10, 10, 10, not add them just as is, but we have to do something, right? Um, also, when we're adding vectors, graphically, it looks like this. But we obviously be doing analytically by components. But nevertheless, so we have one vector A, right? We normally denote the vector with a, 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 a arrow on top, just to distinguish, distinguish, distinguish it a different from a scalar quantity. We have another vector B going up at a certain angle. And the, the addition of them is basically 
that R, which is A plus B, graphically looks like that. I won't be asking you to do it graphically, but I'm just making you aware what it looks like. You will see what I mean. I, there's something I'll show you. With B as well, you've got A going that way, B going that way, and the, the resultant of it, um, someone's saying something. Not you guys can see. Um, okay, just sorry, we have been also, also we are low chain. Okay. And the resultant would be R equals B plus A. So fortunately for you, I'm not asking you to do anything graphically, but I'm just showing uh, I'm just showing you what it looks like. And you will be you will see it. I will give you a nice vector calculator online. So you're able to visualize what's actually happening. And you understand what I'm talking about. And for instance, if you had um, a lot of vectors, so I'm going to make you aware of how it works. It's typically head to tail. So you have one arrow and another arrow. So the head of the one arrow to the tail of the other arrow. And I'm basically the one vector, um, the, the, head of the, the head of the arrow to the tail of the other arrow. And when you're adding vectors, for, for instance, you had a car driving. Let's say the car was moving that way. Um, east, um, north of east, south of west, and then a bit more south of west. The total, basically, I mean, like if you could imagine a car moving through A, B, C, D with different vec different directions and different velocities, the overall direction has traveled is basically R, which is A, B, C, and D is vectors. Does it make sense to everyone? So what I'm saying to you, imagine the car at A, right? And we, we obviously don't see, we're looking at it from, from a bird's eye view and a car goes like that, goes like that, goes like that, goes like that. When we're adding all of them up in terms of mental direction, it's actually just traveled our direction. It, it, it effectively moved just one way. Um, but obviously, it didn't actually move one way, but the resultant of those is A, B, C, and D. I hope that's clear to everyone. So that's what vectors is about. This is looking from a graphic. All right. Um, Subtracting ve vectors is, is, is it's the same, but what do you do is that, um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so what we're doing, we're by subtracting um, a vector B, right, from A, and we have a result in A, B. So this, this, this is a case where maybe we want to find out, like, like the, maybe the question would state, this was the total distance traveled, and we want to find out what are the two, uh, um, let's say it traveled, in this case, 50 uh, kilometers per hour at an angle of, um, at northeast at an angle of 50 degrees, state the two possible directions that travel to get to the total. So in, in, in that case, we have A, we, we have B, we have A, we take B, we subtract A, and we have A minus B. Again, this is graphically, you will, you will do it via computation or analytically or by hand. But that's one way of subtracting vectors. You can have a look at that. Another thing with um, with vectors is uh, maybe when we're adding a scalar to it, um, in terms of maybe we, we, we're making it big. Uh, but you basically, what it's showing every time is the same vector by three. We just push you times it by a scalar number, it will increase three times the length. But if you times it by negative three, it will go the other direction downwards because obviously it's going down. Um, and yeah, it's also three times a day. But this is not really what we need to focus on, just some preamble to what we're going to be doing. That is the question. And this is where we're going to be, right? So I'm, I'm aware of a trick that you guys, and I think grade 11, you guys done components of a force. I'm not sure exactly what it is. But typically, have a force, I need to break it down into two components the X component and the Y component. I'm, I'm assuming you guys are aware of this. And the reason why we do this is that we are able. Um, to basically, um, what's what I'm looking for, so we can add them. Obviously, this also talks to what you learned last week about your rectangle and polar coordinates. So your, so your polar vector would be A at an angle, and when you put in rectangular form, you get your, 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 um, your what you call it, your X and your, your Y. I hope that's clear, right? Um, basically, that, that's what I showed you uh, last week um, with, the, with the A, um, the, the cos theta, the sine theta. And what is tan theta? So you talk about that. So basically, to get your your x, um, your, your 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 ax, that will be obviously simple. It will be cos cos theta divided by ax divided by a. The range of formula with ax being uh, the uh, the subject of the formula. Exactly the same with uh, with a with a vertical vector or ay. 
AY divided by A, so that's sine theta, so I rearrange it. And if you want to find the angle, we have to divide AY divided by AX tan of theta, and you can get the angle at which that particular vector is pointed at. Right? Cool. Um, obviously, when you get the resultant, we all, we all know A squared, AY squared to the root. Cool. And you want to get the angle? I stated that already. Now, what's important before we embark on this, right? We typically get a vector on a Cartesian plane, and there are two cases. The case where one the vector is pointed, so the vector is pointed upwards, and your, your angle is banked towards the x-axis, right? In this case, when you find components, one will be at the bottom, which is the a, a, the a cos one, and the one here on top will be the a y one. In this case over here, the angle is banked that way, right, towards the y-axis. I think you guys can see that. So when you find a y, a y in this in this case will be a cos theta, and a and, and a x will be a sine theta. So it's very important for you to know where the angle is, and it'll obviously tell you which ratio you have to use. So um, this is a very important thing, um, and and because depending on where the angle is, that's how you're going to take the ratios. But you'll do a ton of these so that you can get a lot of practice on this. This is like the bread and butter. Vector mathematics or the components of vector is the bread and butter from a lot of the stuff you're going to be doing throughout um, CS physics. Okay, I got a question there. Fantastic. So there's a lot of talk now, but you'll you get used to it. So the screen isn't showing. Um, I think you have to refresh. Can you guys see my screen? Just let me know. If you guys can see my screen. Okay, Tetra, just refresh, refresh your screen, right? Before we actually embark on, on anything. Okay, fantastic. Is there any questions with components of vector? I just like to ask like two or three students, do you guys still remember this from a trick? Who can still remember it? Anyone? I do remember, fantastic. Ms. Birkus, Rihanna, Nolo, Tebo. You guys remember it? No words, no words. No but sir. Okay, that's why uh yeah. so but okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to test you, right? Um, we'll try to explain and see if you know. So okay, so let me just go to my whiteboard, and we can start unpacking um, components of a vector. So obviously, you see, um, I tend to move away from the textbook because I feel the the textbook's explanation is a bit scant. It's, it's not as detailed or, 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 you know, but obviously we can obviously touch on the problem and, and it's all the same concepts. So, yeah. All right. So let me take one example from Skalman. Skalms. Keep on saying Skalman. Right? Okay. And I think what I should actually say, say further, but um, maybe we should do an example rather and we can, we can talk about it a bit better. Um, but let's 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 try to unpack it as much as possible. And guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Please, I mentioned to you, you pay to understand, make sure you know. Um yeah, okay, so let me just get the example for you. So I'm using Skalman just as an exercise thing, and I'll revert back to the textbook shortly. But I just I like this particular problem because it's quite practical over here. I'll give you I'll give you around two or three of them just to make sure you understand. All right. Whoa. So this question, right? So there's a very nice practical problem assuming you're pulling a wagon. Obviously, this becomes more complicated. This becomes a crane. This becomes several forces um, acting on a piston. Um, it becomes quite complicated depending on what you look at. So 
what we want here, the man in figure 2.13 exerts a force of 100 Newton. So this cable over here as he's pulling the wagon. So 100 Newtons at an angle of 30 degrees. What we want is a vertical and horizontal components of the force. So this is exactly the same as what we did last week. I'm going to see if you're you able to integrate the two. Um, so I want Fx and Fy. Basically, the formulas are given of the two components. So yeah, so can I quickly get that? Is the objective clear, my students? Is it all clear, everyone? Fantastic. Go for it. I'll give you guys around two minutes. Students, are you all following? Is there any questions thus far? Please let me know. It's very important for you to, to not to get components. Okay. Any answers? Yeah, so it should be Newton. So yeah, there we go. If X perfect, exactly how um I don't know if that's Mr. La Mr. La Mulatudi said it or miss. Exactly, exactly, perfect. And what are the what are the directions as well? Because we're talking about vectors. Everyone get it? Up, fantastic. Positive and negative. Okay. So, guys, tracing it. That's what your answers look like. So, if you got that, fantastic. You're on, you, you're on your right way. What's important to note, this is going up. And we'll talk about all the positive and negatives. It's going to get fun. So that's positive. And that's all positive. Right? 
upwards and rightwards. That's also fine. Upwards and rightwards. Very important, right? I typically denote it like that. So to prove to you that this is a vector, if I have to take, let's say if, if I say if I say if x plus f y, and I add them up, I'll get 136.6 newtons, which is not the total of 100. But if I say f equals, and I'll find something called the resultant, I think you're aware of, f x squared plus f y squared, I should get 100 newtons. So as you can see, that are, that, that's what a vector is essentially about. Is it clear to everyone? It's going to get fun. We're just boring the blocks here. Is anyone lost with the vectors? Is anyone unfamiliar? Melusi, Petwa, Akani, are you guys, you guys all get this? Okay, great. I'm going to give you one more. Um, so it's just a subset of it. Fantastic. I'm glad you guys did it. Guys must talk to get it, right? Another one is this. So what I want to this one, I want you to break down. You're not going to find the resultant yet. But I, I, I want us to break down each component here, F1 into its positive component, make sure you have directions. And also um, the, 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 for F1 and F2, I want the X and the Y components. Obviously, we, we denote this as X and Y. So it's getting used to breaking down these components. Very important. You, you all understand it. You'll, you'll come back to this problem when you find the result. All right, because after this, you'll be going into the example in the textbook, and then you'll, you'll, you'll come back here. Okay. So let's let's find the components of each one of these here. And sometimes you can have more than, you can have four to five forces. So I'm just making a way, it gets, gets a bit active. So make sure you understand finding forces, because in motions in two dimensions, this will be something else. Um, and instead of forces, it'll be, it'll be velocity, uh, velocity vectors. In this, this case, you have force vectors now. So I'm making you just aware. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. Get used to this. When we come to a topic called relative velocity. When is it clear? Bonani, Montebo, Precious. Yeah, it's back, sorry.
That's spot on. You guys, uh, you guys agree with Miss um, Charlie's answer? Auntie Rich, Auntie answer? So, if you're smart like me, what I just do to check my answers. Guys, are there any questions? I'll just say F1, F1. I go to my calculator. I say rec 115. I want to see, I want to see who's smart and to get the components. You get 96.5. Nine three. Why is mine? Oh, here we go. Kilonewtons. And um, and the Y is that's my F X one. F X, an F Y one. One of you guys could pick that up. Twenty five point eight eight. Two kilonewtons. And we'll talk about. The significant figures next week. So, do you continue to find the force between? I'm not sure what you mean. And if you're smart like me, I say F2, rec 150, and I'll say the angle in the reference to the X, that's 80 degrees. Someone, someone will obviously check the long way for me as well. The long way would be um, Fx2. OB 150 um, sine sine of 10 and if if y2 is 150 sine sorry cos of 10 so, so hope you guys got that let me see check your answers guys you're unsure please please ask me don't sit to the top. Um, Mulatudi, is it, is it a male or female? Um, is there a question? Female. Okay, Miss Mulatudi, thank you very much. So I'm just using my calculator to check. 26.8. Upwards and one four seven three, fantastic. Or one four seven two. I hope you guys got the same, and the answers should, should correspond. Do you guys know what I'm doing here? Do you understand why knowing? Or Africa, what is the problem? Can you please engage with us? Ask us a question. So when I'm splitting. You can unmute your mic, that's FX1. And the other arrow here will be FY1. And then again on the same axis will be FY2. And then also on that axis will be FX2. 
to stop me if you're not following the FY you're getting. So FY4 um, for F1. Guys, if you lost, please say something. So in this case, um, F1 over here, this one is quite small, 100, cause 15, and this is 100, sign 15. Got that? The Charlie, you lost, but you're getting the right answers. Can you, um, so do you agree with my F, do you, do you agree with my F, my F, my FX1 and my FX2? So Charlie, what is your question? Yes, sir. That's correct, yeah. Machale, can you address a question? Afika, I hope I answered the question. Oh, I get it now. Okay, good. Do you, do you guys understand why, why I'm using the rec function? I'm just showing you like a shortcut. So just to recap this, if I'm taking this diagram again, F1 is here, right? I think I must unpack this a bit further. This is going at 15 degrees. I'm gonna show you some interesting stuff at 100 Newtons, right? This is F1. So F1 for Fxy, this is 100 cos of 15, right? And you should get 96.593 kilonewtons. You can have a total session on this. I'm aware it's, it's, it's a bit of a problem. So what I'm saying is that Fxy is here, right? So the Fx, Fx1, what am I saying Fxy? Then to find FY1, you say 100 sine of 15, and that gives us 25.882. So that goes in that direction, goes up. So if you, if you remember what I showed you on that diagrams, that's what it looked like. Okay, I hope that's clear to everyone. The other way of doing this, you could have also used this angle over here, right? So what's 90 minus 15 would give me 75, right? So I'm gonna show you here, and this is with the co-ratios, that's 75 degrees. You could have also said Fy2, oh sorry, not Fy2, Fy1, I keep on confusing this here. Sorry about that, let's get my razor. Yeah, FY2. You could have also said for FY, this is a hundred. Um, cos 75, you would have gotten the same answer. Just check. And you could have said here a hundred sine 75 because of the co-ratios of sine and cos. So what I'm saying you could have used this angle at 75 degrees or you could have used the 15 degrees. Can you check the, can you check these now? Can you check these over here? Are you guys following me? Please tell me if you're not following me. It's very important. This is like a very core as a core concept in the whole of this textbook. Please repeat. Thank you. So what I'm saying is that obviously you could have used 15 degrees. That's what we did. But what I'm saying is you could have also used 75 degrees, um, which is 90 minus 15. But if you're going, if you're going from this way, right? So I'm just going to expand this here. If you're going that way, 75 degrees is there now, right? 
So what I'm saying is when you're splitting components this way, remember your FY, your FY1, your FY1 will be there. But FY1, because the angle's over there, FY1 is going to be cos of that angle. I mentioned this. And then if you go the other way, it's going to be if X, if X1 is going to be um, sine of that angle. Obviously, F, sometimes F here. Just erase this. You guys get that? So I'm saying there's two ways to do it, depending on your angle. And obviously, you can use your rec function to check. Um, I hope you guys got it. Yeah, I'll make my razor bigger. There we go. Yeah. Let me see what everyone says here. Yes, you guys get it? Africa, do you get it now? Yes, Ms. Charlie. So why is Fx1 sine instead of cos? Yeah, so uh, uh, that's what I'm saying. It depends on the angle angle you're looking at. So remember, over here, with Charlie, on this one. Remember, this is cos here. So cos 75 is equal to if this, this vector here, which is a y1, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, which is f. You understand? So on the... That's, that's if the angle is against the y-axis. And for the x-axis, as, as you know, does it make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah, so I hope you get it. Let me just copy this diagram again, and I can show you. That's why I say that's very important, because sometimes the angles, the, the, the forces come yeah, like this. Can you see that? That's basically exactly what you need here. So this is case number A, is as you know. But what happens you have the angle there, you see? So you're taking um, Pythagoras, it's still the same. You're going to say it's, it's um, divided by A. What's it, Kiri? Sir? What's your brother? Yes. You went silent there. Musikili? Mr. Musi. Hey. Okay, wait on you to come back. Guys, are there any questions? Was it clear? Please stop me. We're getting there. It's, just, we... it's clear. Thank you very much. I wonder how you do both. I like that. Oh, it's there. Must no neighbor. Yes, sir. Fantastic. You guys can always re watch the recording again. Excuse me. Okay. I, I think I, what, what I'm talking about is where you're taking the angle, depending where the angle is. So, what I'm saying to you is you can either say 100 cos 15 is 96.593, but it's exactly the same as 100 sine 75, given that you're using this angle over here. That day. So, you can use 15 degrees, but it's the same thing. That's what I'm trying to say. Sir, uh, go for it. It's a yeah, sir. You are lo you are losing me, sir. I'm not understanding, sir. Why are you using seventy five? Well, or I'm how you getting to the well, what, what I'm saying is, it's yes. two it's two it's two ways of the same thing, basically. I I don't know if I'm if I'm being clear on that. So what I'm saying is, you can either take hundred cos fifteen or hundred sine seventy five. It's the same thing. You got that. Yeah, so you can take it as 14 degrees, fine, but I'm giving you an alternative as to that. I don't know. I don't know if that's, if that, if that's helping in any way. Okay, but we'll, we'll do another one and see. Okay, so that's find the components, right? So I think we've done for Fx. Have we done for F2? Has anyone got F2's component? Okay, we, we basically did it there. All right. Um, let me give you another one. Right. Let me give you another one. Okay. 
get used to this. Let me give you another one. So we're just doing components and then you want to get into the resultant very, very, very soon. Okay. Got some nice examples, found some nice examples. And you will be doing a tutorial on this tomorrow. So yeah, don't stress. We'll do resultants after this one. Okay, so we're going to do this. Then I'll be doing resultants after this. All right, one more for you. So I don't want the resultant. I want the vectors, the, the, the components of this. There's theta over there, and that angle is deemed to be 60 degrees. Is objective clear, guys? Look at the directions, right? Very important. You might see it somewhere. Who knows? I didn't hear from you today. Are you good? Yes, Chief. Talk to me. No stress. Leo Shonolo, I'm waiting on your, 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 your question or comment. Yes, I'm saying that we are here. I was just saying that from the previous question that people should understand that we are focusing on two vectors, not one. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, that's correct. Yes, yes. Thank you for your comment. So the objective, we're not finding the resultant yet. We're just finding the components before we get into the, um, the resultant. Okay, so I'll give you guys five minutes and then I'll do the resultant. But you know, touch on resultant tomorrow, but I will just. Guys, you're unclear, please ask. Tomorrow you'll see me. Make sure you ask. We're just finding components.
All right, are you guys done? Okay, nice. See, that's a serious woman, that one. So I'm, I'm just gonna break it down nicely, it seems. So force A, so we have FA, and this angle is 60 degrees, right? And you know the F, FA's value is eight kilonewtons, right? Or it's just 8,000 uh, newtons if you want, or you can just keep it eight kilonewtons, that's fine. So, F Y Y, right, is like this. Is F Y one. I think I should have also made this yellow. Let me make this yellow with. And F Y one is eight cos of sixty, right? Remember, angle to the vertical. In the other component. And the value of eight, let me just get the values quickly, eight cos 60 is four, right? Four, so that's four kilonewtons. And that's also upward, right? Positive. Okay, let me just quickly see. Um, okay, yeah. If a y, it's not to the right, it's upwards. You're doing this, you're saying it the other way around. So we change colors, let's go green. Um, this will be Fx1, or if I could have called it A rather, instead of, let me call this A rather, Fxa, so we're not dealing with one, two, just fix this. And tomorrow we can touch on resultants and stuff. Okay, and in this case, is my green. It's eight sine sixty. I put that in my calculator, and we should get six comma nine two eight. Right, going that way. Perfect. What I was also saying, how you can how you can also view FA. FA is also the same as Africa. This is for you. And can you please do it. FA is also 30 degrees to the horizontal, right? So same thing. So this is 60 degrees to vertical. Africa, can you just just find me the find me this? And this is 30 degrees. And what I'm saying to you is the same thing. So if X A is eight cos thirty and if so this is first only for force A. We still only do force B. If um, X if Y A Africa, can you find me the answers please? Is sign thirty. You gotta understand what I'm doing here. This is the same thing. Just look at from either to the horizontal or to the vertical. Are we all on the same page there? Yeah, you can keep killing Newton and Newton. It's fine. Don't worry, Africa. You guys get that. Africa, I'm looking for the answer. What's FXA? Yeah, can you see? It's exactly the same as the previous one. Do you guys see that? Same thing, 6,289, and this will be eight times off sine 30, it's gonna be four. Same story, two different ways of looking at it. Is that clear to everyone? Yeah, that's perfect. Is that clear to everyone? The next one, I think we reached our time now, okay, six, I want to see where's these answers 40 degrees 
All right, so let me show you the directions as well of the components. You can keep it in kilonewtons. And yeah. Yes, that's correct. So it's 90 minus, that's correct, yeah. Because remember, it's a right angle triangle. Um, which is okay. Okay, so Wendy, see the zoom in this one. They can choose different colors over here. Um, let's go with light blue. So in this case, if F B cos theta is going to be F Y A, and the horizontal component will be F um, F X B is going to be that F B times sine. You guys all agree with that? Oh, let's get my screen back. Yeah, thank you, Africa. That's very important to understand. Guys, if you lost, please let me know. So what are my values? I think tomorrow we'll find the resultant of these things here. So can someone just get the values and then I'll close it and then you can call for questions. And tomorrow we'll continue getting the resultant and do around two, around more problems and then yeah. We can see. Yep, okay, let me check. Um, that is uh, where's my directions? So if XP equals six sine of 40 degrees, right? Also, I'm just saying that you could also look at a six cos of 50, same story. If you're looking from, if you're looking at the angle there to the, to the horizontal, so don't worry about that. So this is equal to, six um, sine 40, that's 3,857 kilonewtons. Let me see, what, what did you get? Oh, that's X and for Y, F, Y, B is six cos of 40, which is the same as six sine of 50. You get four comma, yeah, you could say four comma six basically. We talk about adding all these three comma eight six. Yeah, okay. How did you get eight comma six six? That's impossible. Uh, you guys agree with this? Yep, fantastic. Guys, I'm opening the last seven minutes to any questions possible. Don't be shy, ask. You need to know how to do this, otherwise everything is up. Everything will become a bit difficult. Wendy, you good? Jabulo? 
Mens Kirkus, are you, are you attending some event in the dock? And what's important now um, is direction, guys. Like I said to you, um, she's here. Okay. This is positive. This over here is positive. And what's the and, and, and what's the what's the what's the sign on FYB, guys? What's the sign on FYB? Thing is negative. Exactly, it is negative. So it's pointing downwards. This is what I was trying to accentuate here. Right. Now we're beginning to add vectors. So it's negative because it's going down here. Pointing down. If it was pointing to the to the left, it would be negative as well. But if it's pointing upwards, it's positive to the right. Yeah, okay. Fantastic. And like I said to you guys, why well, I showed you the previous uh, a thing. Um, remember our our um, what we did our polar rectangular coordinates, and uh, we we measure from the from the x axis. What I'll do to check my answers because obviously you need to get all of this. Um, it's 30 degrees. This is this this. I'm just showing you. This is for um, force A. 30 degrees to the horizontal. And all I'll just all I'll just go for my components. I'll just say um, rec on my calculator. Um, what's it? It's eight and thirty degrees. And obviously it'll give us two values. It'll give you the f a x and the f y. I hope you watched the previous recording. And if you want to do the next one, I, I hope I hope someone is is following me. I hope you guys are following me here. The, the other force is here at 40 degrees, right? But remember, we, we, we measure from the x axis. So, in fact, this whole angle here is going to be 270 plus 40, which is 310. And you can check for force B, um, rec 6, and 310. And you'll get two answers, which, is, which will be F. Um, that's why you learned the previous podcast. It's not just for fun. <laughs> What's it now? If what is it called now? If uh, BX and FBY. And obviously this will give you this will show you that the, the, the Y direction is negative. Is that clear to everyone? That's relating last week's stuff. Yes, sir. Fantastic. Thank you. Guys, the lectures work hand in hand. Each session is talking to each other. Sir, the direction does not depend on the person. No, the direction is absolute. It has a, a particular thing. It's not depending on the person. It must be like this. You'll see with the resultant. Otherwise, the resultant will be incorrect. If X B must be positive, if Y B must be negative. Guys, if there's any questions, we place it at the end. You can just let me know. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Perfect. Guys, go to the textbook and go play around with some stuff. Um, we can do a few practice. Yeah. Uh, Lucy, go for the chief. Um, so there's a person to ask uh, if like this will this video be available yes, sir? Uh, like I had a problem with network to start so I joined the class very late. Yeah, I know it's available after. It takes around 30 minutes for it to go to Blackboard. I obviously showed you. Have you watched all the online lectures already? Oh, sir? Have you watched all the online lectures? I show I show in the previous lecture how to get the recordings. Engage with your, oh. your colleagues. Yeah, oh, okay, all, so after, yeah. And make sure okay, you do so the then... problems.
I'm not okay, thank you. Sir. you okay, okay. Um, anyone else? No, I'm not pushing. Thanks. Anyone else? Any questions before we close? Goodbye, sir. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you very much for attending. I hope you guys learned something today. And I'll see you tomorrow morning. We will be talking about finding resultants, uh, looking at distance vectors and stuff. And then, yeah. Then you have your tutorial period later on. But we'll talk about that. So, guys, it was at the end. Tomorrow we have a normal lecture. Normal time at 9 o'clock. Yeah, 9, quarter to 9, whatever. And then you have a tutorial period at the end of the day, the, 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 the period now, where um, the, the, the tutors will be there. And um, you'll be doing this this type of exercises, the forces, the, the, the components and stuff. And you'll engage with them. So you actually meet the tutors and then they will guide you on how to solve these problems. Um, and yeah, it, I've got the tutors, so it'll eventually work like that. So anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. We will continue getting the resultant. And then, um, yeah. Cheers, guys. See you tomorrow. And don't forget to download Scalm's outline. Very important. Cheers.